prepped already, you'll notice I have everything prepped. And when I'm doing this, you're gonna think, oh my God, everything is so easy when she does it. It's because I have my mise en place. That's everything in, everything in place. You know, we learn that in culinary school. Um, there's a lot of things that's, that happens with, when it comes down to the cooking process that no one talks about. And a lot of times it's fear. Fear is one of the things that's never put inside of a recipe. And we don't think about that. And we wanna know, man, what's going on? Why is this happening like this? It's because the fear is in the way, you know? But if you read a recipe, if you go over a video, I'm sure Dylan's gonna keep this live and stuff like that. You go over the video over and over again. My rule of thumb, something happens in your head three times when you read it. Read it three times. And by then you're thinking, oh, so I just saute the bacon, the sausage, and the seasoning, throw the beans in with the stock, and then that once it starts to thicken up, then I just add the meat at the end of the last 45 minutes. I just made what you're about to taste sound like nothing. You know? That's what happens when you read things ahead of time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start sauteing in the bottom of the pot. Different things like the bacon, we can stock that over here. We're gonna go with the bacon. And it's quick. It don't take long now, depending on how you want to deal with it. Depending on how you want to deal with it. If you want to deal with, you can do this and have it sauteing, or you can throw it in the oven. Now, if you want to take this, because remember, it's going to pop. You know, like my youngest daughter, she says, so what's going to happen if you get burned? You heal. That's all I can tell you, you know? <laughs> At the most, you know, if you ever get burned in the kitchen, Keeping some vinegar by you helps with the scarring process, with the healing process. It, it kind of neutralizes everything. Throw that in here and start sauteing that. And the reason why we're sauteing the sausage is because the sausage can just be cooked inside of the red beans just fine. I promise it'll be fine. You don't have to saute it first. But if we're talking about how I make my beans to be the pot of beans that, you know, you show up to an event with. Oh yeah, you gotta make it sloppy. Honestly, I can just saute a whole grill, especially a sweet onion. I can saute a sweet onion with a little salt and pepper and just eat the whole onion, right? But I wouldn't do that to a regular onion. So that tells you that there's a difference in flavor profile and you have to pay attention to that and respect it. You're gonna notice in the bottom of you're gonna notice in the bottom of the pot that it's soaking up all of the fat. And it's good, it's okay. Because even though it's soaking it up, it's still staying somewhere. You know, it's almost like when somebody shoves something under their coat. That's what it's like, you know? The fat is shoved underneath the coat of the vegetables. When you see it's getting sticky and some is regular, that means some is gonna have a flavor profile of being caramelized, and some is gonna have a flavor profile of just being regular sauteed and broken down. If it's something that's salty, like this, it's gonna lock in some of the salt inside the sausage, which makes it a more, it makes it a more exciting experience to eat it. Because what happens is, is that if you just put it, I'm gonna let it slow while I talk. If you just put it inside of the pot while it's rolling, you know, while it's cooking or whatever like that, yeah, it's gonna season the beans. And the sausage is gonna be, it's gonna be good. Not that I know the difference, I'll call it edible. It's gonna be good, right? You don't feel like eating nothing. But if you saute it, keep some of the seasoning in, and then release some of it, when you're eating it, you're tasting the beans, the smoke, the flavor, the sausage, the influence of the sausage. You see how I'm naming all these different places? Because a lot of times when we just throw stuff together any kind of way, it becomes food. And it's, and it's just flavor. But a mild flavor, edible, quite enjoyable, better than having nothing flavor. But when you start layering flavors, when you taste it, that's what makes that rock back to go, mm -hmm. Or immediately, like when I taste good food from people, my first response naturally is this. Like, you made that? Like, you know, that kind of feel. And you want that jump back. You want that jump back. And you don't want to cook it too much. You just want to leave some of the fat in the bottom 
of the pot to meet up with the beans to have a party. That's what you want it to do. You don't want to do too much. is with another layer of fear I'm waiting for it to get hot so I use my hand a lot of natural cooks um, they use their senses a lot you know so they they think in ways and they they don't realize it a lot of times that's why it's hard for them to teach people how to cook because they don't know how to put into words how they knew like when I asked my mom about okra I said you know to put the vinegar in it she said she did that with her she said I don't know but when you think about, when I thought about, because I have a teaching gift, when I thought about what vinegar smells like and what it's used for, I thought, of course it would eat away swine. <laughs> vinegar cleans anything, you know? So I said, well, that makes sense. So she smelled it and thought, you know, and stuff like that, right? So um, what happens a lot of times, we encounter people who aren't good teachers, you know? And that's just it. And you walk around thinking that you can't cook because you just couldn't understand the way they speak and the way they teach and stuff like that, you know? All right, so with the oil and flour, you know, you can add it in early. I like to wait until the ripples start crawling across the bottom of the pan, and then I know. Now the root gets up to 500 degrees, boiling point is 212. So with boiling point being 212, that means if you take, if anything touches this root, it's gonna go past 212. So it's gonna be a combusting like boil. So you have to be careful. When, when I first put the oil in the pan, you're going to, I mean, the flour in the pan, you're gonna see a sizzle. And at some point you're gonna see a lot of, and you think, oh, that's gonna be really hot. That's not the hottest point. That's actually a point where you could, well, my hands are kind of callous. Like they're kind of rough. So I'll mess and touch with stuff. Like I have saw something from the whisk inside my pan before when the roux was still white and did like this, you know, and pulled it out and you just do like that real fast, you know? Don't copy me. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell my daughter, my daughter's turning six, well, she's six now, but she was five when I had a frying fish and she said, that looks dangerous. And I was like, this. And she said, so what's gonna happen? Like, what happens if I burn myself? You heal. I know she'd be thinking, this one is nuts, you know? So <laughs> I'm sure I'll be hearing about that later. But in life. So it's getting hot. It's starting to shiver a little bit. Control. Control is the name of the game. You have to stay in control and you have to have a method. And you have to have order. You see everything laying out? Once this rule is done, when I start throwing this stuff together, you know, ain't no way. Ain't no way that is. Right? It's that exactly order. In every area of your life, you need order. With this, once you learn how to make this, once you try this, try it in a small form if you want. Just try to make a roux on your own and just stir and just try with a little bit, like a fourth of a cup and a fourth of a cup. You know, fourth of a cup of oil, fourth of a cup of flour. And then start just whisking it and let it grow. And you're going to be like, wait, if I can make a small one, I can make a big one. If I can make a big one, maybe I can have a gathering. You know, that's what you want to have. That's what I do believe. That's what our ancestors want too. We, they want us to commune support each other, you know, especially women, men, whatever, like, that's, it's a good thing to have. Like I did last time, it made it super, 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 um, super, super charred to where it's almost brown. Okay. When you see it on top of the grits, I didn't go for like that creamy, uh, texture for the shrimp and grits because I have so much cream in this. I have milk in that pot. I'm about to throw this in there. You're gonna see me dump a stick or two of butter in that too. It's some stuff. So I mean, I feel better giving y'all that like that with the chopped tomatoes on top. It makes me feel a little less risky, but you know. I still got this in my hand, but I still feel good looking at that. Thinking, mm, yeah, chopped fresh. Cheese, balance. Man, off balance. 
Man, I would bust my head if this was a sea salt. But I mean, you know, it's flavor. And it's, it's you want to be full of flavor. And like I brought up with the grits, I was saying that you just saute them, get them charred and stuff like that. Or they now sell, now I do wash this. Can, uh, like canned beans or canned uh, corn or something like that, you can get that briny taste off of it by rinsing it off. They sell, I think that's dope. That's dope? One of the two. They sell um, fire roasted corn. It already has the black marks on it. So you can add that to your grits. You see? You saute that, give them a little flavor, not too much, but just butter, salt, pepper, or garlic. Get it to where it has a little bit of something, dump all that in there. Your grits gonna have a hint of garlic. Man, what are you talking about? That's gonna be crazy. All right, so now we're gonna add the cream cheese. Did I need this crocodile dungeon knife for this? No, but I got it. All right, so you see how soft it was? I always like to leave it out so it can get soft. Or you can buy the whipped. That'll work. 